Hello, everyone. Can you listen to me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is Clarissa, and I'm going to present about usability testing. So, something about me. Uh, most of you, I think, you don't know me. But uh, I'm a software engineering student at University of Brasilia. I'm from Brazil. And I was an outreach intern from December to March this year. Uh, I was mentored by Jim Hall. And uh, I worked with some usability testing on some uh, designs, new designs for GNOME, like in some programs like uh, Notes, Calendar, uh, Get It, uh, sound settings, and so on. And I worked with the design team, especially with Alan Day. Um, so let's get started. Um, what is usability? Uh, usability uh, is the easy to use or access uh, some software or some program. Um, I'd extend that concept to um, to normal objects we use on our routine, like uh, teapots or windows or exit rooms or uh, exit doors. <laughs> so every stuff we use has some clue or they have some design that gives us a clue about how to use it. So we have to build software with this kind of uh, quality that allows us to use it them uh, in intuitively. So why usability? Uh, usability ensures that our users, uh, they can use your so our software, but not only this, uh, this ensures that users uh, in actually enjoy using your, our software. So this is very important to make users want to use our software. Um, and it, it is very important, uh, I'd, I'd add it. It is very important, especially on uh, floss, because uh, if we, we want to, uh, users to use uh, uh, free software instead instead of uh, instead of proprietary software, we want them to like using it. So we have to work on usability to make it better for them and interesting for them, so that they can uh, just open it and use it right away. So how can we ensure good usability? We have some some uh, plenty of uh, guidelines and heuristics to follow while being, building our designs, but uh, something that is a really good weapon on building designs and uh, ensuring designs are good is usability testing. So how do you do usability testing? We sh uh, we show users how to uh, our software, and then we ask them to accomplish tasks on our software to watch them using them and see how they behave and if they are trying uh, to see how they think while they are using our software. Um, the main things I want to enforce here, reinforce, is that uh, usability testing is not hard. Uh, usually, uh, people uh, just go to the point, they jump to the point that usability testing is hard or expensive or takes a lot, of, a lot of time. But the truth is that you can learn a lot of your, of, uh, about the usability of your software by just watching your users actually using your software. So, yeah. I'll, I want to show you now how to do usability testing on your own programs or on GNOME programs, or why not? <laughs> I use my, as example, my usability testing I, I made on notes. 
I think it was a really good test I made because I discovered many things. So let's go. Um, first of all, we need to decide what type of usability testing we, we want to use. So it, it all depends on what, sh what do you have now. For example, if you want to test some design but you haven't implemented it yet, you can prototype your design, you can use a program or you can use paper to design the, the screens as you imagine they will be. But the most important thing is that uh, you don't have to do exactly drawings that look perfectly like it, your design will be. You have to keep in mind just that you have to draw something that has the main components of your design and they must have some... Uh, they don't have to be beautiful, but they, they have to be usable. So you have to... Uh, design the screens you want to test and you have to s be able to simulate the behavior of your software. The main difference between paper prototype and uh, designing a prototype on your computer is that uh, the way you, you change the behavior, like when you have paper prototype, you keep switching the papers between the, the along the usage of the use, the tester, so you click there and then you show some screen with the, the paper and with computer prototype you can uh, design some screens uh, drawing them, you can use HTML to uh, simulate behaviors like if the user click here, you can use the area tag to, to change screens and so on. Or you can obviously use implemented design uh, if you already have it. So if you want to improve your design, you can show the user the, the design already working. And so let's go to the next question. Uh, how many use testers do I need? So as many users uh, we can, it's the better, right? So if I can get uh, the, the most the most quantitative user, I, I don't know how to say in English, <laughs> uh, if I have many users, the better it is, right? No, <laughs> it's not like that because we, we need, uh, we don't need quantitative information, we need qualitative information. Uh, so we obviously, if we run tests with many users, we, we are going to discover more information, but not necessarily new information. We have, after some point, we have some repeated information that we don't care anymore, you know, because we already knew that. So, uh, in my blog, I mentioned an article about that explaining why five users is the best, but uh, I'll, I, I can't explain very deeply how that works, this works, but um, we can say that in these articles, uh, we, we, they mention that uh, from uh, each user can discover about 31% of uh, the issues, usability issues. So with five users, um, you discover a lot of things, but from five users and uh, forward, we don't have many new information. So um, this graphic, I don't know if you can see very right, but uh, uh, with five users, we discover about 85% of the, the issues, but from on, you, we see that we can discover 100%, but uh, you see that after five users, we get uh, less and less information and running tests uh, becomes uh, something really uh, boring because <laughs> you, you don't discover many things and the time you spend uh, running tests uh, could be something sometime that you wrote some feedback and pass it passed it to the design team. So it's better to uh, 
keep with the five testers and then you run again the tests after the changes and so on. Um, and the next thing is what kind of users we are looking for. So um, it depends on your application. Like for GNOME, I like it to, to um, choose users who represented uh, users who don't use a computer very often or users who use computer but they don't use Linux or users that use Linux but they don't use GNOME and so on to uh, see how the difference on their behaviors while they are trying to accomplish the tasks. But uh, for uh, some specific applications, like if you have some specific kind of user, you don't want to have uh, several types of users. You just have to look for representative users for your uh, test. So that's it. Um, I had a professor at my under uh, my graduation that uh, at some period he, he said that um, if his mother couldn't use the, his design, the design he built, it meant that uh, his design was not good because his mother isn't someone who uh, who is very in touch with computers. So if his mother could use the design, it meant that it was a great design. So I took that in concern when I was choosing my users because that means uh, that we have a lot of information from users that are not used to computers and that's very important because we want to approach users to use our software, um, new users, I mean. So the next step after we, we chose our users is to write tasks. Um, the tasks we need to write sometimes, sometimes no always are something very direct because we want to, the users to do this, uh, to accomplish these tasks, to show how they behave with the software, to show how they discover doing it. So we write some tasks that um, uncovers what we are, we are trying to to test on our on our designs, so that's it. Those are the tasks for notes that I created. So create a new note, look for a shortcut that helps you to change the text style, put no notes inside a notebook, search for a note, change the view of your notes. So that's it. They are very objective, direct. And then we write sc scenarios. Scenarios, just like tasks, are what the users are supposed to do, but we, when we write scenarios, we try to put the user on the context where the user should be when he's using the software. And we try not to give some specific clues about how to complete the task. Like if you want to um, tell him to click a button, you don't say click, uh, you want to click this button. You don't say that, you, you say, what you expect the user to think, and then he figures out himself about how to accomplish the task. So this is an example for uh, a scenario uh, that is, it might be annoying to change the text style by clicking on their buttons all the time. There, was, there were buttons of changing the, the text style like bold, italic, and yeah. And I wanted the user to uh, try to figure out how to use a shortcut to, to do it on the keyboard. So I asked him, please look for the keyboard shortcuts to change the text style. So he had to uh, search for help in the, the program to figure out how to change the shortcuts. The, the target I wanted him to look for is that I wanted to see if he could figure out how to uh, find help to find the shortcuts. 
Um, and then after that, you can run the tests. So you speak, you to run the tests, you have to give, you have, no, you, I like it to give a brief explanation about the program, what the program does, and I like it to say, to tell the user that it would be okay if he couldn't accomplish the tasks, because I wasn't testing the user exactly, I was testing um, the program, the design program, the design of the program, so, um, I use it to say that because they they felt um, a little bit threatened to <laughs> to test, especially when they didn't know how to use the program. They they felt like I was going to laugh at him them if they they couldn't accomplish the test. So it's very important to clarify this and. Yet, uh, I, I use it to, to say, to tell them that if they couldn't accomplish the task, the problem was in the, the design and it was okay if they couldn't accomplish the task because it meant that, it means that the, the design is not very good or something like that. So, Oh yeah, it's very important to ask a few questions about the user profile to see if they are uh, to collect information about the users are you are you are having because probably if you are testing with users that are more familiar to computers, you you get better results. Or if you are uh, testing with users that are less familiar, you are getting some worse results but that's it. Um, and then, you, of course, you have to describe how the tests are going to be like. And after that, you ask the users, you tell, the, you, you speak the scenarios to them, like as if you were telling a little story to them to put them on the context, and you watch them compl uh, accomplishing the tasks. After you watch the, the users uh, doing their tasks, you have to analyze the results. Um, I used to write uh, very clear feedback because it wasn't me who was implementing the changes, so I needed to be very clear to the design team about what I discovered to let them know what needed, probably needed to be changed. So I used to write uh, what worked well, what were the challenges, and I like it to write some improvement sh suggestions because I usually saw where the, the user clicked first. Like um, he was looking for a help button and then he clicked first, I don't know, in a menu to, to look for the help button. So I use it to tell the, the design team that uh, what he was his first attempt to for them to to get there. Um, it may be useful to know what to have a clue about what they should build on the next version. Um, and there there is this heat map table that I didn't use in my internship because I didn't have time to use it, but it's very interesting because I, it's very clear how to, you, you, it's very intuitive that the green color means the, the user could uh, uh, made the task and that black means the opposite. So I like to use this, I use it this on my first application and I like it to use it on, on some uh, college's projects, my personal projects, because it's very nice to keep track of your, or your usability evolution, you know, you, you do the test iteratively, so it's interesting to keep track of your results to see your design being improved, you know? So green stands for uh, the user could easily accomplish the task. Uh, yellow means the user had some difficulties to 
accomplish the task, but not much. Orange means the user had some difficult to to accomplish the task, more than yellow. <laughs> and uh, red means the user had several difficulties to accomplish the task, and black means the user couldn't accomplish the task, he couldn't figure it out, and he gave up. So I have some nice tips here. Um, the, the most useful for me were the one and two tips because I think I discovered a lot when the users uh, think it a lot, thought a lot, and because I knew what they were looking for. And when I asked some follow-up questions for the ones who were, who were a little bit shy to think aloud, <laughs> uh, they, I discovered what where they were looking for and some things like that, that I, I wouldn't figure out just watching. And, oh, record the test is also very important because you have time, if you were taking notes while you were watching the user, uh, use your software. I feel very redundant saying use, <laughs> the user use. <laughs> um, uh, so while, if you try to write your, um, while you are watching your user use the, the, your design, you feel you you don't pay enough attention. So if you ask the user to record the test and then you listen later, you you can get a lot of information paying attention on the user using the software. <laughs> um, that's it. So what did I learn from usability testing for GNOME? Um, as a software, um, a future software engineering, I. I think it's very important to care about usability. It's not very common, at least on my environment, to care about that because we are sometimes worried about uh, coding and and finishing our issues, but we are not very sometimes worried about the users, you know? And that's very important because if we build uh, software that users can't use, it, then why did we build or software, you know? And I think this is, I, I've already mentioned it, but I think it's especially important on open source because uh, that's what, uh, that's the way we can attract users to our environment, you know? And from that, I learned usability testing. I'm not someone from UX design or something like that, but it's, I think it's some knowledge that it's very important, you know, everybody should know a little bit about that. And also I got in touch with Gnome's uh, community. I have, I've never got in touch with uh, open source community or, or such a big community. I. I, I am in touch with open source community, but not so big. And it's fun because I, I, I think I'd never do that if I, if I, if I, it was on my own, you know, because it seems, I don't know, I, it felt a little bit scared when I applied to Outreach and I got selected to, to be intern, I was a little bit, uh, scared of talking to my mentor and to the design team because I don't know it felt like they were famous people you know <laughs> I was very nervous before the the conferences we had uh, I was very, really like oh my god I'm talking to them <laughs> so yeah it it's it felt like I I knew that I know now that um, um, so open source contributors and maintainers are, um, there is some expression in Portuguese that says, uh, gente como a gente, you know, people like us, you know, and I don't know, it feels, it feels good. It feels good to be here and to know so many nice people <laughs> and that's it. 
So my next steps, um, some people, I, I changed that slide because some people uh, ask me what I'm doing now after my internship. Um, I'm finishing my graduation, so I'm not very, I don't have uh, many available time to contribute to open source, but uh, as I am finishing my graduation, I have to write a, and uh, work on a, undergraduate thesis, thesis, this word is hard, <laughs> thesis. So I'm thinking about uh, doing some work for open source like uh, related to usability because some, a, a problem, not problem, but something I noticed it, it is that usability testing is very easy, but uh, we, ha we don't have uh, as far as, uh, as I know, we don't have some easy way to contribute with usability. You know, there is nowhere you can submit issues and say, oh, I want usability testing for this design or something like that. So I was researching how could I uh, solve this problem. I wanted to build maybe some tool or methodology or something like that because I think it's very important to do usability testing during the the cycle of development, you know, and that's it. I I think. Uh, do you have any questions? <laughs> so we have about thirty minutes for questions. Uh, hi, uh, thanks very much for your talk. I'm over here, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to ask, earlier on there was a talk which, which spoke about ac accessibility um, and for users perhaps who have issues using the mouse, double-clicking, yeah. et cetera. Um, you spoke about having users in your usability testing who kind of fulfill different categories, maybe those who are frequent users and then not so frequent. But I was just interested, do you think you need to also then pick from, from users who, who have certain accessibility issues or that good design means good design and, and that won't be as great an issue for, for users? No, actually it is very important. I didn't have those um, examples of users on my, my, on my testers, but I think it's very important because, yeah, it, usability is for everyone, you know, and that's actually a concern I don't see very much in my environment. You know, I know very, uh, I know mm, many developers, but I don't think they are either concerned about usability, or if they are, they don't care a little. Uh, they don't care <laughs> at all about accessibility. You know, it's very important. You you raised a very important point. <laughs> so next one. Who was it? Is it you? Yeah. I think it was you. <laughs> uh, so uh, the question is uh, whether there are uh, any specific uh, methods to test usability, not only on, of graphical, but also of command line applications. Uh, is there anything that would apply? Of course, this, this means advanced user, but I, I still, the questions that uh, usability testing yeah, uh, that's aims to achieve like, are valid, but um, about methodology. I actually don't know. I, I think they, they may apply to that, but I think it's harder because it's just um, typing things, you know, on the the... Figuring out, figuring out the correct order of options, the correct options themselves. Yeah, I don't know if there is. It, that's interesting because I've never seen that. I've never seen someone talking about that, but it's interesting for us. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> uh, thanks for your, your work and the talk. It's all been really useful for us on the design team. So um, really appreciate your everything you put into it. Um, the, the question I have is around kind of trying to make usability testing more on demand. So like, um, I think one of the things that we often find when we're, we're making software is like, 
we have questions when we're right in the middle of it that we you you need answers kind of too quickly because you know like you're there and you're working on a feature and you're thinking should it be like this and should it be like that and and ideally you'd be getting some testing right then and there rather than months down the line um, so you're not kind of guessing all the time I suppose so I was wondering if through the course of your internship you had any ideas about how we could make usability testing kind of more immediately accessible and kind of quicker to turn around so we could like you know kind of hey Clarissa we're working on this feature can you <laughs> kind of get us some results tomorrow please or something yeah be yeah nice. <laughs> it's, it's quite hard because sometimes it doesn't depend on you you know to, yeah tipo oh meu deus <laughs> i said some some words in portuguese sorry <laughs> um uh you when you're working on usability testing, you have to have volunteers uh, available to you. So it's quite hard to, to uh, you have to have many contacts to have someone now, <laughs> you know. But something I, I thought it might be, I don't know if, um, I don't know if it, this could solve the problem, but as I was saying, my my undergrad thesis was was going to be about that because when you are developing some some program and you have some issue, you can you can report on the repository and um, someone asks someone answers quickly and that's it. Oh my God! Oh, okay. <laughs> and someone uh, answers very quickly, but we don't have this for usability, you know. And I was thinking about that because uh, there must be some way that you can just report some usability uh, problem or something like, I want someone to do this usability test for me. Can someone help me, please? And then the, uh, someone who is available and has testers for them does the usability tests and sends it to you so i i what i thought about was building an extension to to uh gitlab or github to show uh, and then you put a tag on the issue and you can report this is an usability issue can someone do usability testing on that screen please for me and then someone goes there and is able to to run the usability test and send you the results. That's what I thought. Anyone else? You? I have a question, which is, do you think it would be possible to do usability testing in a kind of remote fashion, distributed fashion, rather than face-to-face? -face? Mm. He, he wants to speak. <laughs> uh, of course we can. Uh, we can uh, set up virtual machines, we can access them uh, using uh, null VNC. Uh, this is exactly the approach that, for example, Mobile Prog Limited uses for remote courses. I can demonstrate that if we, uh, if we have a fast enough internet, but I, I'm afraid uh, we are not. <laughs> yeah, it's possible to do that. I, I, once I had to, to test some application, the person I had to test with it was not present and we and then she shared her screen with uh, in a conference she installed the program and then i asked her to do and then i was seeing her cursor and yeah it's it's possible <laughs> yeah you uh, i was gonna say i think that uh it would be really awesome
Yeah, it is. So that's the, the, it's like a little bit of social challenge. Like, could we set up, like, a, you know, a get account for everyone who has nominally said they would help with the user testing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. <laughs> so, Alan, you wanted to say something? Uh, well, I mean, it does. this does exist. There are, like, platforms that do this, and you give them money and, and a web page, and then they give you results, and then someone pops up on the screen, like, using your website. Uh, <laughs> so, like, it would be kind of nice to try and get close to that model, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, someone else? I was wondering if the, um, the results of your testing of notes were published somewhere. Yeah, they and are all on my be? blog here. Okay. The, yeah, you can see there. <laughs> uh, can you do the same thing for uh, a sort of a B testing if you're trying to decide between which is the better of two designs does this work as well oh yeah you can do I I've done this already to test if some feature makes sense on my application or not you can use for many things you can test two designs with different users and then see compare the results and see which one fits better it's very very useful <laughs> May I ask a question as well? Uh, so, in that case, do you use the same set of users and repeat the testing with a different design? Or um, do you get a diff other five users so that they are not already trained, I mean? Um, it depends on what I was going to do. Sometimes I tried, if, if the design was the same, which didn't happen on my internship, well, like, um, I was going to test, uh, for example, Gnome sound settings. So I was going to test it, and then they were going to improve, and then they were. I, I had to test again. It didn't happen, but it's just an example. If I was going to do that, I couldn't repeat. Or maybe I could, but uh, I think, for me, it would be better to change the users to see, uh, because they already knew how to do the, the tasks, so... I think it would be better to change, but it's, there is no problem if you want to use the same users. I think um, I used it, uh, three of my volunteers were the same on, on like two rounds and it was okay. I think they didn't figure out very quickly the, the stuff so because they are not uh, Linux users, so I, I used them a lot. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Okay, so at 3.30, um, there will be downstairs Robert McQueen talking about product metrics and respecting privacy. And in this room at 3.30 will be James Henstridge talking about supercharging app upgrades. Uh, thank you very much, Clarissa. Thank you. <laughs>